I live in this old house. It's uh, 200 years old here in the coastline of Nova Scotia. It has a loose stone foundation. That's why they built them in the old days. They dug out the dirt and just piled the stones up around there. The problem with this is it means that in the winter, or really any time of the year, animals can get in there. Had all kinds of animals over the years, uh, but nothing quite like this. I think it was about two years ago. It was February, middle of the winter. My wife and I are in bed. We wake up in the middle of the night and we hear something sounds like cats, or some kind of animals having a fight scratching all kinds of weird animal noises and I don't want to pay any attention to it I'd rather go back to sleep. The dog woke me up actually about uh, two o'clock in the morning the dog was was barking going crazy and uh, within a millisecond of being woken up it was like smell it was just absolutely atrocious so I, I got up and you know realized right away that we had been skunked and um, I couldn't get back to sleep, so I had to go and get cotton and stuck my, my nose full of the cotton. So I hear my youngest daughter screaming, yuck, what's that? Pamela's her name. And I realize, well, this skunk smell is just going through the entire house. Um, it's about time for her to get up and go to school. And then I got Pamela off and, and she came back and she says, I smell it. I said, well, by the time we get to the end of the road, you know, the wind will have taken it away. and. And I really wasn't taking this whole thing as seriously as probably I should have. So I was walking down the road and I was like, man, I smell like skunk. So I ran home and I told my mom and she said, no, you have to go to school. It's probably just your imagination. So I ran down the road to catch the bus and I got on the bus and everybody was like, oh man, it stinks like skunk. The family is in kind of crisis. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna eat my breakfast. I'm gonna escape from the problem. I'm gonna go to the airport and fly up to Toronto and I, I will deal with this later. This is what I tell everybody else. So Leslie was up and off to the airport uh, fairly early that morning. I get on the plane. My wife's gonna call some professionals or something to try and deal with the smell. Get to the airport in Halifax, get on the plane. I had a cold around this time, so my sense of smell really wasn't that great. At this point, it really wasn't bothering me all that much. And I'm walking down the aisle, and as I walk down the aisle, I notice heads come up. People sniff the air. The further I go, the more people start sniffing. I get to my seat, 21F. I sit down there. Everybody on the plane starts to say something like, do you smell something odd, something unusual? You know, I open up a book, Jules Verne, Journey to the Center of the Earth. You know, just get my mind off it, try not to pay any attention to it. Five minutes later, before we've taken off, everybody's still talking about this skunk smell. The, uh, the attendants are going up and down the aisles. They're, they're looking for something. Everybody's sniffing. <laughs> Where's it coming from? <laughs> for some reason, they don't pinpoint it to me. So the attendant comes down the aisle. She's checking everywhere, sniffing, trying to find the source of this odiferous smell. <sighs> I'm sitting there thinking, do I own up to this? Do I say it's me? I'm the guy who stinks. Or do I just keep my mouth shut? It was early in the morning. I'm not really very good at honesty early in the morning. I didn't want to deal with it. But everybody's talking about it again. Newspapers are handed out. Uh, they're getting on with the flight going. But first, the co-pilot comes down, goes looking for wherever the smell is coming from. Maybe he figures that uh, you know he, he, he can solve the riddle. He can't find it. The pilot comes out. He looks around. They delay the flight. They have an odd smell on the plane. They're worried. What could it be? Everybody knows it smells like skunk. It kind of cheered everybody up in some strange way. You know, everybody was sitting there quiet. Now everybody's talking about skunk. The pilot comes on and says, um, unfortunately, we have a delay. You've probably noticed the unusual smell in the airplane. And we'd like to find the source of that before we take off. So things are going along here. And everybody's still talking about the skunk problem. Then some bright person says, oh, I know, maybe it's on the newspapers. Some skunk did his thing on the newspaper sitting south outside the airport. Uh, so they start collecting the Globe and Mail, or maybe it was the Financial Post. I think it was the Financial Post. They collect all the newspapers. Somebody comes out from the airport, takes them off the plane, and everybody's satisfied, even though the skunk smell is still there, that the source of the skunk smell is gone. We take off, we fly to Toronto, and I have this feeling that everybody on the plane smelled a little bit like skunk by the time that they got there. And maybe at some businessman's lunch or some kind of social occasion, other people were whiffing 700 miles away later that day. That smell of skunk was still there. So meanwhile, back at home, my wife and kids are trying to deal with the problem. Well, I got on the bus and I didn't smell it until I sat down. So. 
I looked over at her and she was all crouched against the window and her eyes were wide, it was such a sin. And I started to smell it really bad and I nudged her, I said, Pamela, why don't you roll down the window <laughs> so that it'll seem like you're disgusted with it too, but they won't know it's you and you'll get rid of the smell. But she was just, she looked at me and she shook her head and then looked back at the window. And then we got to school and... I refused to go into school and I got her to go in and call my mom. And she went in to call my mom, and my mom said that she would just bring me a change of clothes, but I was like, that won't make any difference. So I stuck my hand through the window and through the screen, <laughs> ripped the phone outside, and I started talking to my mom. She was like screaming. So she wanted to come home, of course, you know, and I said, well, I'll bring you, I'll bring you some clothes. And so I, I took some clothes and I stuck them in the dryer with a bounce sheet, figuring, you know, that that might disguise the smell in, in the clothes, and uh, got to the school and realized at that point that she and I were both reeking bad. So Pamela and Terry decided to heave all the clothes out on the lawn, open all the windows, and abandon the house. But my older daughter, Senyata, who was staying with a friend, came home later that day, and she saw clothes all over the yard, windows and door all open. She goes inside, and she sees a note on the table that says, get out while you can. The evening after the morning when the skunk incident happened, I came home and it's getting pretty dark out and I noticed all our clothes were spread all over the hill and all over the driveway and the car at the top of the hill. And so I was thinking, oh my God, we got broken in. So I, I kept going into the house and I noticed the doors were wide open and this was not looking good. And then there was a note that said, that get out while you can it's horrible after she saw the note on the table she really didn't have any idea what was going on she thought you know some strange criminal had broken into the house and uh, pamela had taken all of the clothes out of the uh, the house and had strewn them all over the the yard and uh and and poor pamela every single morning for about three months she would go into her closet at night and take her clothes outside that she was going to wear the next day just in case we got skunked that night. And then she would bring them back in cold and, and she, would, she would get dressed in the morning with these cold clothes that she had put out in the middle of the night so she wouldn't have the embarrassment at school again. <laughs> A little while later that same day, uh, Terry phones up the professionals. We get in one machine, they bring, it's like $100 a day or something supposed to get rid of the smell. Um, but it doesn't seem to do much good. And she tries a number of different things. The family toughs it out for a few days. Eventually, I'm back home trying to deal with the problem. We were told that we could get rid of the skunk with light and loud music. these into the house, but after three days, still had a skull, and we hadn't slept the rope from all the music. 